Hey guys, back with another video. This one's going to be on ignition and ignition time and ignition advance. Now there's three basic distributors that you're going to have. You're going to have either usually a distributor that's locked out or you're running full advance all the time. That's more for just total, I wouldn't recommend that enough, just straight drag racing. When you're going to take it to the track and just drag race. Not on the street. It ain't good on the street. It, it's hard on the motor, you know, for it to run a long time but anyway the other way is through these right here which is mechanical weights this this rotor button right here this is another strip there just to like is if it was on here bolted down when i twisted it it would be just like this it would be advancing the timing all right now these distributors over here you can take this screw out of this one. I'm going to show you how it is to lock it out real quick. All right, I take the springs off. Now, it, I've got part of this off, so it's not quite this easy, but it is not hard at all. So I'm going to take these arms off. You know, they got washers on them and things hold them, you know, make them slide. So I take both of those arms off. I loosen up this, this screw. It's a 10 millimeter on mine. And I just loosen it up. And if it's usually they got a peel that slides like one of these. If you want a lot of advance, you use this real thin peel right in here. And then you bring it down right here. And it limits the travel. Now that's a lot. That's the thinnest peel is going to give you the most travel. Where if I take this one off and I put this big pin on. Where did, oh, wrong place, brain fart. All right, here we go, guys. This is this is what it's like with the big pill. See how much difference there is in the movement? So you can taper, you can adjust this timing to have probably uh, eight or 10 degrees advance up to probably 20 degrees, somewhere in that vicinity. They make all different sizes of these little, what I call pill. It's just like a little shouldered washer. And, uh, when you want to make lock this out, you take that out, take the nut off. Now, you see where it goes right there? I want you to look at both sides where you, you can see it clear. That's where it's got to be to make it have mechanical advance to use the pills. Now, all we're going to do is pull that shaft out. I then got it pulled down a little bit. Turn it around to this right here. Now, right, I'm sorry, I've got, I've got a... I got a little small rubber, uh, little bushing in there I got to take out. Now you move it around to that hole, just opposite of this hole. There's, there, excuse me. This is the hole that works for the bushing, for that mechanical vent. Now you turn it around and you come around here and it falls right in here. And then it is locked. You put the nut back on. Then there's supposed to be a little washer on here. I, I'm two fumble fingers tonight to put the washer on there. I probably never get it on, but what happens when you get old and feeble? I'm not quite there. But, uh, and you put that on there, you tighten it up. And when you tighten it up, this, uh, this is usually a little lock nut. And then this thing's locked. It ain't going to move one iota. And then you put your, leave, leave the, don't worry about your springs, leave all that off. Bolt your distributor cap here. In fact, this distributor is already locked out if you look at it. There's, there's a little hole in the nut and it's locked out. It ain't going to move at all. So what we do then, we take this distributor, we put it in the engine, get it on number one, get it on the compression stroke, slide it wherever you're, you're going to put your number one on your cap lined up with your rotor button and you'll be pretty close. Then you get a, go ahead and get it all back together. And then when you crank it up, you put it in the motor, you crank it up, you get your timer light out. And you need a, you know, a time in advance that shows up. Most of them will show up to 40 degrees, like, like on this balancer here. It goes 50, 50 degrees before top dead center, 10 degrees after. You're always going to be on the before top dead center side. That's what you're always going to go by. So we're going to put this distributor in the motor. 
Set our time light on number one. We're going to look at it. We're going to dial this distributor around till we get 36 degrees, 38, whatever you're running, 32 if you're running a fast burn combustion chamber. And when you get through with that, you're going to lock it down tight and you're not going to get all that crazy movement with the time. And it actually helps a lot unless you've got a lot of slop in your, in your actual cam in play. This is going to read pretty close if, if your teeth match up perfectly, perfectly and they're not loose. It's going to take almost all the slop out of it, period, and keep the timing more correct. And the advantage to this, having that much time in that idle. Now, one, let me let me go back just a minute. Make sure you keep your idle up on these things. When you're running this much timing, do not idle the motor low. It's, it's firing 36, 32, 38 degrees, whatever you're running, before top is center. So it's trying to stop the piston. So, so keep it, keep the time. I mean, the idle up to a thousand minimum. I mean, 12, 1300, pop it in gear. And if it stays up there a thousand, you got a good converter. That's what you want. And, and when you do this to that car, it's going to be like somebody just running in the back of you at 60 miles. When you take off, it's going to snatch your head back. It's going to have twice the acceleration out of the hole. I mean, it will run. There ain't no doubt. It will, it will, it makes an absolute performance advantage. But running this on the street, you're running too much time and all the time, it, sooner or later, it, it will probably put premature wear on the motor. But if we're just doing nothing but drag racing, we're going to tear our motor down every season anyhow and look at the bearings and make sure everything's good. And uh, I knew that people, some people would go this far with their their street racing, but I, I don't, I don't like to do this. And, and also with this much time and if you have an MSD box, you want to put, there'll, there'll be like a, let me show them these. There'll be a, you'll have a timing, you need to add like to your MSD box, add a, a spark retard on it. Here's, here's one of the spark retard. It, this is just a three degree. They got them, a lot of the boxes have it built into it and it'll automatically give you 20 degrees retard cranking minute it gets over a thousand rpms it goes to full timing where you had it at 20 degrees retarded from 32 or 36 you're going to crank pretty easy most of the time usually it ain't going to want to try to drag the starter when when they get this high and you don't have a spark retard it will drag the starter i've tried spinning the motor over and you know with the starter button and then flipping the ignition on and sometimes it starts sometimes it want to tear the end bell off the starter so what you want to do is make sure you got a spark retard because then cranking becomes so much easier. If you retard the time in 20 degrees, it, usually it'll start up. It, it'll just spin on over. And, and you know it when, it, when it goes to drag the starter, it'll sound like it's stopping the motor every time it turns. It'll, it'll be a whoop, 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 and it won't want to just spin over. It, you'll feel it, and you don't want that. That's hard on it, and... uh. It's better, it's better to get the spark retard or either get you a two-step box. Whatever you got to do, you, they make a spark retard box that's separate from the MSD box. And then some of the higher-end MSD boxes has, uh, has it built into them. Actually has it built into it. And, and there's not just MSD. There's other good boxes out there. But I'm not just trying to promote MSD because there's other good boxes out there. All right. Now, this will... Locked the distributor out on the drag car, you'll probably pick up, shoot, I would actually pick up three or four tenths of a second. Maybe even a half a, half a second. It, it's amazing what you'll do if you are if you don't have a good setup distributor getting advanced like you need that with it locked out. It's just a big advantage over it. Now these here, we're going to, we got, we got these, these weights. These are the actual weights for the distributor. Get on there. Hang on, go on now. Try it on this side. There we go. And let's see. Right there. Now, once I put these, I'm gonna just slide one spring on here where you see how it works. And I know most of you know this. I'm just trying to help some people out that's beginners and, and maybe it, it'll put them in the right way. And some of you might Never have locked stripper out. I don't know where you're at. I just trying to cover as much as I can. Now, I'm gonna take this nut off, and I should have done this before I put that spring on there. But anyway, the nut's off. 
slide the spring off one end, one on both ends. Take this, take this and slide it out. Spin it around where we're gonna have our mechanical advance. All right. Now we're we're getting there if I can a little bit move a little slow tonight. All right, guys. Let me get this back on. Right, here we go. Now, now here's the mechanical advance. Uh I've got it locked up. Hold on. I've got the stop it a minute. Hey, first try. Oh, I'm just kidding. A little tempted humor there. Look, guys, I got one spring on there. There's another one belongs here. And you can put a light spring here and a heavy spring here. You can set your advance where it'll custom come in. You have to watch it. Watch the light. Have your uh, time light that has a spark advance on it where you can tell how much time you're getting and how quick. Basically what you're trying to do, generally speaking, is try to get the timing in, all the timing in, at 3000 RPMs. That's the main thing I like trying to do. And you play with these springs and these bushings until you get that amount of travel you want. Because you're going to set your initial, usually at 10 to 14 is where I like to set mine. I like to set it at 14 if I can. And then run about 24 mechanical vans. So after you set your initial, then look at how far at 3,000 RPM, 3,500, see how far the, the the timing goes up. If it goes up to, uh, you're at, uh, let's say we got timing on 14 and we get 28 mechanical, well, we're too high. You know what I mean? You, you might want to drop it back down to 10 if you're going to run 38 degrees. So you have to figure your initial, the more initial you can run, the better you are just don't go over about 14 degrees when you're running on the street. You, it, it makes it hard to start after a hot set. So, if you let's just say what I would shoot for if I was really, really want some, I'd probably shoot for. Well, no, that wouldn't be too much. 24 degrees mechanical right here, and 14 degrees would be 38. That would be it. And if you need less, set your set your initial down to 12. And if it needs a lot more than that, then you need to change this bushing right here in the bottom. You can probably see that bushing right here. It's, it's moving, and the more bigger bushing you put, the less movement it has. So it'll bring the timing less mechanical. So if you got, let's just say we got 20 degrees mechanical, and then we ran uh, 14 degrees uh, initial, you could play with the initial some, you know, and you'd have 34 degrees. And that, that's what you're after. That, there's a lot to this now on the vacuum advance distributors. If you run one of them, some of them you can adjust, like the four distributor, you can adjust with an eighth inch Allen wrench in the end of the vacuum advance where the hose slides on. You can put the eighth inch Allen wrench in there, turn it counterclockwise to slow the advance, the amount of vacuum advance you get. You turn it clockwise to get more to weaken it. It's just the opposite. It's a left handed thread in there. So you're, you're tightening it to basically weaken it and you're you're backing it out counterclockwise to tighten the actual spring in the diaphragm that sets on one of these distributors. Now not these, these are mechanical, full mechanical, but the one that has the little vacuum advance that's got the hose for it. Those you could use, but I prefer the mechanical if I'm running the hot rod. If you're running just a street engine, a mild, mild street engine, yeah, use the vacuum advance. But then again, you have to watch your time and see how much total you're getting a regular cast iron, standard old small block head, you might want to run 38 degrees. And then if you're, if you're absolutely, if you're, uh, if you're hear any ping or you think you're running a little too much, bring it down to 36 or 34. Run a fast burn combustion chamber, 32 is usually a good number. Total advance, total advance. And one more thing, there's two ways to set your advance up, your vacuum advance. On your, usually most coverage, you'll have a full vacuum manifold pressure on some Distributors, you can do it. I'd rather have it on the ported vacuum side of the, like the Hollies, where you don't have no vacuum at idle on the, on the hose, but when you start to idle it up, it starts getting vacuum. So it's a, that's ported to the, above the throttle plate. As the throttle plate, cr throttle plate cracks, it starts pulling vacuum. And that's the better way. Guys, I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope I didn't confuse you. If you have any questions, please leave me some comments. And it, it, please subscribe and, and uh, if you can to our channel, we could use it. And if there's anything you want to hear or something I can do, 
throw it out there and I'll do my best. If I've got the parts or can explain it to you, I'll do my best to do it if I know what, what you need. And uh, y'all be careful, be safe, and we'll see you tomorrow.